To frog or not to frog, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the stash to suffer the dropped stitches and tangled yarn of outrageous fortune, or to take needles against a sea of errors, and by opposing, bend them to knit to finish. For in that finish of projects, what dreams may come? The needles delay the proud knitter's contumely, the pangs of despised mistakes, the knitter's delay. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all, and knitting projects with great pearl and moment, in this regard their stitches turn awry and lose that name of perfection. Soft you now those fair works in progress. Knitter, in thy frogging be all your yarns remembered. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Midweek Ramble. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. In today's video, I am doing a frog or finish. I have taken out all of the projects that have been hiding away in their little hidey holes looming over me as I my knitting mojo is really kind of hit the dumps and I decided that it's time that I pull them out and decide which of these I'm going to cast off and which of them I'm definitely going to finish. I feel like this has in the past been a really great way to supercharge my knitting mojo because it helps shed those layers of kind of obligation you feel that you have to these little bundles of yarn back here and I really think that that could do me some favors right now. And it was about this time last year where I uploaded a video very similar to this one. Actually, I think it was a little earlier last year where I needed to do a frogger finish so I could pump up my knitting mojo and really get back on track. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that this is just what the doctor ordered in terms of relighting that knitting fire. I wanna dive into this, but before I get into these six projects and sharing with you whether or not there's something I'm planning on finishing or if I'm going to be frogging it, I want to share with you some things to keep in mind when making these decisions yourself. I feel like some of us, it's really easy to see a project and know immediately that you either want to finish it or you want to frog it. But for others, it might be a little bit more complicated than that. And having some kind of guideline or some questions to ask yourself to give yourself an idea of what this project means to you might be just the help that you need to commit to one or the other. Whatever these things mean to you and how you might shape these to help you make your decisions is really up to you. I'm gonna lay them out, give you a brief example and move on to the next. And then we're gonna go ahead and dive into those projects back there. And I'll be keeping those things in mind as I decide whether or not I'll be frogging and finishing those. Now, the first thing you're really gonna wanna consider when deciding whether to keep something or to frog it is how much enjoyment you're getting out of the project. Are you still enjoying the process? Has it become kind of a chore? When you look at the project sitting in its project bag, does it feel like pressure is there for you to finish that project? Or do you feel this sense of gravity pulling you towards that project? Even if you don't actually reach for it, do you feel something attracting you to the project? Because those types of things can be used as a barometer as to whether or not if you were to pick that project back up again, you're going to enjoy the process. So enjoyment is a really important thing to consider. The next thing you're going to want to consider, especially if we're talking about a garment, is fit and size. Is the project turning out to be just the right size and fit for you or whoever is going to be wearing it? Does it sit on your body in a way that you like? Even if it fits you, do you like the way that it looks on you? It's got to be really crummy to spend all that time knitting something only to find out when it's all said and done that you really don't love the way that it looks on you. So definitely consider size and fit. If you can, try it on and see if you like it. If it's too big or too small, or you're just not sure about the way that it looks on you, you might want to consider frogging it. The next thing to consider, and this is something I'm considering with one project in particular back here, is yarn choice. Are you still enjoying the yarn? Does it feel good in your hands? Does it feel the way that you remember it feeling when you first purchased it and started the project? How about the color? Does the texture meet your needs or your preferences? 
If you're not in love with the yarn anymore, chances are you're not going to love finishing the process and you may not like the final product. So consider the yarn that you're using. There's no shame in frogging something if you don't like the yarn and de-stashing the yarn or donating it or just putting off to the side later. If you don't like the yarn, chances are you're not going to love the finished object. Another thing to consider here, and this may not come into factor all that often, but the skill level. Did you cast onto something and make some progress on a project that's maybe a little out of your skill set? Perhaps it's just a little too complicated. It's providing more frustration than learning opportunity, and you consider it to be kind of a daunting task. If this is the case, this doesn't necessarily mean that you need to frog this project, especially if you like the project. It may mean that you just need to put it on the back burner for a while until you can build up your skill set to approach that project with a little bit more confidence. But if you're anything like me, frogging it and starting fresh later might be just the ticket. You're also going to want to consider how compatible the pattern is for you. Does it suit your style? Does it fit into your design aesthetic? If it's something that's going in your home, can you see it in your home? If it's something that's going on your body, do you feel like it's going to make you feel good and confident when you're wearing it? If it's not compatible with you anymore, you might want to consider frogging it. But just because something isn't compatible with you as a finished piece doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to enjoy the process. So definitely consider not frogging something just for that reason if you think you might enjoy knitting it and gifting it to somebody else. The next one is time investment. Are you okay with the amount of time that needs to be invested in order to complete this project? If it's something that's going to take you a considerable amount of time, I'm looking at all of those people working on granny stripe blankets and wondering how long those projects are going to take them. If you're okay with the time investment, stick to it, especially if all of those other things that I mentioned here are falling in line. But if you feel like the time investment just seems a little too much and you don't want something hanging over your head for that long, especially if it feels like it's hanging over your head, then you might want to consider frogging it and using the yarn for something else. This one's a big one for me because I'm really into having a purpose and an intention for knitting something and having it be functional. Do you still have a purpose for knitting this particular item? Is it fitting into some form of functionality for you or for somebody else? Is there purpose there? Now, that doesn't mean that you have to knit everything with purpose and have some kind of direction. You can knit with reckless abandon all you want. But sometimes for some of us, if we feel like we've lost the purpose in the project, it might make us lose motivation down the road or we might even be losing motivation for that very reason. So if you can't put your finger on the purpose and that's bugging you and it's starting to take away from your mojo on that particular project, you might want to consider frogging it. This next one, I feel like it's definitely something to consider, but I don't think it's a deal breaker. And that's stitch consistency. Now I have gone through the kind of dilemma of stitch consistency very recently, actually with my stripe pipe sweater and almost got to the point where I thought I was going to frog the whole thing only to have my confidence bolstered by folks here in the wool needles hands community, letting me know that I should keep going. Um, and, and hope it'll block out. And actually I had some people suggesting the opposite and it really was kind of a dilemma, but ultimately I decided I was gonna keep at it and hope for the best. And really it turned out to be just fine so far. But for some of us, stitch inconsistency can be a problem and can lead to an unsightly fabric with whatever the project is that you're creating. So if you notice that your stitches are inconsistent and maybe you haven't made it that far along in the project, but it's really bugging you and it's an eyesore, it might be time to frog it. The last one might be a little artsy fartsy, but I think it's really important to consider. And that is your creative vision. Now knitting is a craft. It's kind of artsy. It's a way to express your creativity. And if the project that you're working on no longer fits into your creative vision, it's probably going to take away from your overall motivation to complete the project. Now, ultimately, whether or not you decide to finish or frog something is up to your personal preferences and the satisfaction you're getting from the process. Sometimes it's important not to have a knee jerk reaction, but rather to set something off to the side, come back to it later with fresh eyes and then make a decision. Perhaps when that time comes, considering these 10 things will help you make a decision with confidence. All right, I am ready to pull out my first project and share it with you and talk a little bit about whether or not I have decided to frog or finish. And I think some of these I'm a little bit on the fence about. And we're gonna start with what's in my peanut basket 
right here. Now I left uh, the tag on. My husband makes fun of me because I leave tags on baskets. It's kind of a thing with me, um, but that's good because I can tell you where I got this. This is a peanut basket. And there was an episode on the channel a while ago where I shared with you using a peanut basket if you're knitting socks two at a time. And I love the idea of doing that. Um, but that's what this is. It's a peanut basket. It's a basket with two sections. They're attached in the middle. So you can put peanuts on one side or pistachios or whatever shelled nut you want and the shells on the other side as you snack on them. This came from Roseanne's Woven Goods on Etsy, and I will leave a link to it down below, but I love this. In my peanut basket is a pair of Sunday socks by Petite Knit. These were one of the last things I casted on before my knitting mojo took a, you know, a dive. Um, I want to say the end of September. I casted these on, and then October came around, and it just all my inspiration to knit these or really anything for that matter just took a nosedive. And so they've been sitting in my peanut basket in my living room alongside uh, the fireplace where I have a table full of various little knitting paraphernalia and I haven't made any progress on these. Um, here they are. I'm knitting these using a couple of strands of fiber for the people yarn. This is the chestnut bark colorway. It's really beautiful. It's um, merino, alpaca, and silk all together with the two yarns. There's Kind of that combination going on here but it's so beautiful i love it am i going to finish these a couple of things i think when i i think about this project i try to think like what is it other than just having lost knitting mojo that's really making me not pick these up because i absolutely love knitting the sunday socks and this is so easy and i think it's because i've been keeping them in this peanut basket if being able to take a project somewhere is important. For example, me taking these to hockey practice would have made these, these would have flown off the needles. If that mobility is important, a peanut basket's not going to help you because having them nestled in the peanut basket, you don't really feel compelled to take them out and take them with you somewhere. And I'm not walking into the hockey arena with a peanut basket full of yarn. I mean, I could, I probably would but I'm choosing not to do that. So I feel, I feel like if I had kept these in a project bag that I can grab and go, I would have gotten more done on them. That being said, I absolutely have every intention of finishing these. In fact, um, I had mentioned that I am currently knitting for my kids' teachers. I'm knitting a pair of fire pit mitts for one, and I was planning on knitting a pair for my other kids' teacher as well. However, because I haven't started that second pair yet, I was thinking that these would make a great gift for my son's kindergarten teacher. Um, and that is, I think, what I'm going to do because they're already started. I'll be able to definitely finish these in time for the day before Christmas vacation so that I can gift them to her. And I feel like that would make a great gift. And I think they're a fantastic color and super soft. She happens to be a knitter and um, a viewer of the podcast, believe it or not. It's a whole story. I'll tell it to you one day. It's really cool. Um, it's all very coincidental. And I think it's awesome. But I know she would love these. I know she's not, you know, sensitive to wool or anything like that. So I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do with these. So for the Sunday socks by Petite Knit that are currently living in my peanut basket, these are definitely a finish. And... A finish very soon and oh, this yarn is so scrumptious I can't wait okay this next pro what is even hold on yes okay all right this next project is one I don't think I've ever shared with you before um, I casted this on kind of frivolously a while ago um, but I haven't shared this with you so here's here it is this is a Sophie a Sophie scarf it's not really anything but it's supposed to be a Sophie scarf by Petite Knit and I think the color is fantastic. And just looking at the color inspires me. Um, but this is all I have. There it is, it's a Sophie scarf. It looks like a little gnome hat. See that? That's all I have. This is a gorgeous 100% alpaca yarn. So it's super, super drapey. And the color was a kind of a lucky strike color that I dyed. It's not a regular recurring color. However, I love it and I would love to recreate this color. It's beautiful. Um, but that's what I have going here, and this is what I have of the Sophie scarf. I love the yarn. I love the color. I do like the way the Sophie scarf looks, but I'm kind of wondering if I would be more partial to the style of a bandana as opposed to the little neckerchief, if that's what you would call that. Like, it's, it's kind of just like a really long strip as opposed to that design. 
I don't know, but I've had this sitting out and every time I look at it, I have the hardest time just ripping it out. I mean, there's not much here. I could rip this out and be done with it in no time, like just be done and put the yarn away, but I don't do it because I feel like the idea of a Sophie scarf in this color is just really exciting to me. Like just something really cute that I can wear around my neck with like a, I don't know, like a long sleeve t-shirt and a cardigan or something, you know, just enough to give you a little bit of warmth. Uh, maybe if you're indoors, I don't know, you know, th th who knows? The world is my oyster with this. I just don't know if I want to finish it. I don't know if I loved the real quick back and forth of such a long strip of fabric. Um, yeah, I don't know. If anybody has knit the Sophie scarf and loved the process and loved the final product, let me know down below because I would like, I would love to have additional motivation to finish this because as it's going so far, I think it would make for a really pretty Sophie scarf in this color. However, if I decide to frog it, I would do something more like a bandana. One of the patterns I shared in that bandana video over summer, something like that. So as far as, you know, some of those things that I mentioned that you need to consider before deciding whether or not to frog something, I don't love the process. I love the look of it. I love the color. I love the yarn. It fits with my, you know, um, kind of like my aesthetic. It definitely fits with my creative vision. I could see myself wearing something like this. Right now it's like the process that I'm getting hung up on. So, I, I, I mean, again, I said you shouldn't make a knee jerk reaction. This is one of those things I feel like I should set aside, but it's been sitting aside for so long. I need to just make a decision. So I might wait until I see what you guys mentioned in the comment section. But if I had to just give like a real quick answer as to whether or not I'm going to frog or finish this, I'm compelled to say that I'm going to finish it because as much as I like the idea of a bandana, there's something super classy about that scarf, like that real little one. So this, this may be a finish. Okay, moving on to this next one, another relatively recent project. This is the Oon sweater and I am drawing a blank on the designer's name. I will pop all that information up on the screen for you, but this is the Oon sweater. And I casted this on, I want to say about a month and a half ago. And I love the yarn. I love the design of the sweater. However, I don't think that my version of the sweater was coming out properly because of my gauge. I think I have some gauge issues going on here. I think that this neckline, though it's, you know, pretty and I feel like it could work, I feel like if it blocked out too generously, it would just become really big and not at all what I'm going for. And so I don't want to risk that. It's making me not want to work on it because I'm afraid to make any additional progress because I feel like it's just not going to work out. The sizing is going to be off. So I've decided on this one that I am definitely going to frog it, partly because I plan on using, I'm thinking I want to use this yarn with another yarn together to knit another Franken sweater. So that's kind of what I want this. I love the color. I want a really lovely top down raglan, cozy, boxy, oversized, you know, sweater, and this would be a great color. And then the other yarn that I have to pair it with would help to kind of boost up that like kind of gray factor. So I think I'm going to be frogging this down the road. I plan on knitting an oon because I think it's a gorgeous pattern. But in terms of this one, it's just not coming out right. The size and the fit are off here. And I don't want to put the time into it and the effort if I just feel like in the back of my mind, I'm always going to be questioning the size and the fit. This I'm using is Sayer Eco Soft, which I really love. It's a cotton alpaca. If you've yet to try this, it's definitely one worth trying. It's a gorgeous blown yarn. Um, it's, it's a chainette construction with little fibers blown into that chainette kind of tube, if you will. It's a really great yarn. So I have this um, that I'll be using for my future Franken sweater, but this I think is gonna be hitting the frog pond as Kristen would say, and I'm okay with that. I'm 100% okay with that. It's gonna free up my needles, free up my yarn for something more immediately inspiring with that particular yarn. Okay, this next one, whoops, is, let's make sure this camera is not, there we go. This one is one you've absolutely seen before. Well, if you're really new here, maybe not. Um, but this is a crochet project I started last year. Was it last year? Maybe it was this year. Oh goodness, I can't remember. This is the Sundance Throw by Mama in a Stitch, Jessica Potaz. And this is the progress I've made on it. 
honestly, I swear to you guys, up until the point that I just held this up in front of the camera, I was convinced I was going to frog this. Okay, let's run through those things to consider really quick because now I'm in a dilemma. I see it on the screen and all those really pretty colors in isolation. Okay, like out of context of anything else in my home or anything, I think this is very pretty. A couple of things I, well, a few things I'm not loving as much as I was in the beginning. I'm not loving this yarn. It pills like nobody's business. I don't love the way that it feels. It's a 100% acrylic yarn. Um, I want to say it's, oh goodness, hold on. I have a few full skeins of this. I just want to make sure. Yeah, Mandala. This is a uh, Lion Brand Mandala yarn. This is the one that I was using or holding up in the thumbnail of the acrylic pros and cons video. Um, it's pretty. The colors are really pretty. I just don't think it is the, the best quality acrylic. And yes, there is such a thing as high quality acrylic and low quality acrylic. I don't think it's a low quality acrylic. I just don't think it's great. It pills really easily. It feels kind of not nice. That, no, that's not right. That's not the right word. It's not that it's not nice. It's just, I don't love the way it feels. You know that feeling when your hands are kind of dry and you pick up a microfiber towel to, I don't know, like clean your glasses? Is that like weirdly specific? And the microfiber feels just really awful in your dry hands. That's kind of, and my hands aren't even that dry right now. That's kind of just always what this feels like to me. And it's very staticky. And acrylic is want to be staticky. That's just a nature of acrylic or anything that has, you know, some kind of a synthetic element to it. Um, so I don't know. I'm just not in love with the yarn. And and I'm not terribly in love with the colors within the context of my home. They don't really fit with everything else. And so this, guys, as much as I know some of you were hoping to see me finish this, and I know a lot of you, um, well, I don't know about a lot of you, but I know some of you cast it onto your own and finished it like a long time ago. Um, and I inspired you to do that, which I think is awesome. And I love knowing that you love yours. I don't know if I'm going to, I think I'm going to be frogging this. And when I do frog it, I think I'm going to be donating the yarn um, to, there's a, a senior, there's a fly flying around. There's a senior center close to my home and they have this amazing arts and crafts department. Um, and they're always looking for nice yarn and things for the, the folks to use there. And I'm thinking I might donate this there. And I might even just take the blanket with the pattern. Um, and gift it to them and, and they can finish it. That might be kind of cool too. So that's my thoughts with this. I'm just not loving the project anymore. I think it's a frog. Okay, this next one has been hidden away in this guy for quite some time. I think it's been about two years since I've done anything with this, um, like really anything to speak of with this. And it requires this giant, well, it doesn't require that. Well, there's some... Oh, wow. I didn't even see these. Hold on, guys. Look at these. Do you remember these? Oh, man. I've been wondering where these are. So these socks... I need to finish these. These aren't even part of the frog or finish, guys, because if I were to frog these, that would be an embarrassment. How cute are these? These are a pair of socks that I started about six months ago. Not even six months ago. Um, with a sock set that I got from Little Lionhead Knits. I love her sock sets. How cute. And these were living in my peanut basket and I traded out. So, ugh, I need to pull these out. Oh my gosh, I've missed these guys. Look how cute those are. They're just basic vanilla socks. I added the little racing stripes around the ankles, but they're just basic van vanilla socks and I love them. I didn't even, re I couldn't remember that they were in here. Talk about out of sight, out of mind. I'm going to pull these puppies out because they can go in the peanut basket and I can take the petite knit socks, the Sunday socks out and put it in something I can take to hockey practice. Okay, back to this. This is the Versal sweater by Albina McLaughlin. And I started this, I want to say about two years ago. And I made just this much progress and I stopped. <laughs> and I can't exactly remember why I stopped. But spoiler alert, I have zero intention of frogging this. I will be finishing this because I love the way it looks on so far. Um, I'm wearing my no frills sweater right now. I would put this on for you. Um, I, I'm not going to do that right now, but it does look really 
lovely on. The neckline is so nice. I feel like this is more what I was hoping for with the Oon sweater, but I just, you know, whiffed on the gauge. But the neckline is so pretty. The shoulder construction is really interesting here and I love the way it looks. And the yarn is really nice. It is a little bit on the rustic side, okay? I'm using Newtoden yarn paired with I think it's Biche Bouche. Hold phone. Okay, we got Newtiden. Newtiden yarn. Pencil roving yarn here. And I'm pairing it with Le Petit Silk and Mohair by Biche et Bouche. Right here. And these two together kind of really give me this nice subdued purpley brown color. And there's a little bit of a gray in there as well from the long... Uh, hairy fibers in the wool so it's really pretty so that is my versal I'm definitely going to finish this it's living in this giant tote because there's so much yarn here I'm the way that I'm doing this is I'm holding two strands of the Newtoden together with let's see I have two strands of Newtoden and a single strand of the Le, Le Petit silk and mohair so I have to have two of those plates of Newtoden in here, plus my mohair and my sweater. So it's not a very portable project, um, but I am definitely going to finish that because I love it so much. I feel like it's just, I need to finish that because it is really a beautiful sweater. If you would love a beautiful, easy to wear, top down, I don't want to say raglan. I feel like the construction's a little bit different, um, but something really lovely. You need to check out Albina McLaughlin if you haven't already. Her designs are gorgeous and her photography is uh, fantastic and so inspiring. I have a sweater here that I know a lot of folks have been wondering about and wanting to know my intentions and what I plan on doing. And that is my Break the Curse knit along sweater that I was knitting for my husband. Um, you guys, is really embarrassing. So here it is. It's like a headband. That's all I started. So I was really having an issue with what to knit for my husband in terms of sweater designs. I went back and forth with the yarn and I didn't like the original choice I had for yarn. And then I decided I was going to knit him a sport weight sweater in this really dark, um, lovely valley wool yarn, which I absolutely love. And this is as far as I got. And, and the way that I was going to be doing this is I was going to be using Karen Templer's blog series where she talks about how to improvise a top-down sweater. So I was going to be knitting the um, the crescent for the neck and then combining that together and then working down the sweater with raglan increases and all of that. And then coming back and doing an applied neckline later. Um, that was my plan. And then I just lost inspiration for whatever reason and decided to put this away. It was hiding in a basket in our den next to our piano with a bunch of piano books. I, I don't even know what I was, I, how was I ever gonna find that? And so I think it was something I was really just like, I was pushing it away. Like it was stressing me out. And I think it has something to do with the color. It was around the same time that I was working on my little black tea. And I feel like all the dark yarn was just kind of starting to take like a toll. I'm, yeah, so I don't know. So I, there's something about this that is just not, I'm not feeling compelled to work on it. I'm not super inspired by the weight of the yarn. I don't love the really tiny yarn, knowing that the project is going to be big enough to, you know, accommodate a man who is six foot five and 212 pounds. So I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm I'm still kind of thinking on about this. I can tell you um, when it comes to what I'm going to knit for my husband that there is definitely something, there's going to be something that I knit for my husband. I'm pretty sure this is not going to be it. So this little bit of stuff here is probably going to be frogged because I just am not finding it to be inspiring. And for the time investment that this would require, I don't want to be working on it if it's not initially inspiring to me at this very moment. I'm feeling pretty good about this. It really does do something to kind of help pump up my motivation to pick up my knitting projects because it's cleansing. It's like you're doing a Maria Kondo on your like project stash and that's always very helpful if you tend to become overwhelmed by having too many things going at one time, which I definitely can become overwhelmed by that and I need to remember that when I go to cast on new projects as many of us, you know, need to remember. So it feels good to do that. I'm 
feeling I'm feeling that fire coming back. It's always nice when it does. I feel like I lose knitting mojo for a stint twice per year. There's always two times each year where I go on a slump and I just don't have the interest or not the time. I mean, that can be a factor too, but there's just something about my my inspiration just isn't there to actually sit down with my hands and work on my projects. You know, life, whatever, things things happen and, and you lose that motivation. But this kind of thing is a really good step in the direction of reigniting that fire and finding your motivation again. And so if you happen to be in the same boat, give it a shot, pull out some of those projects of your and see if some of them just need to go or if some of them spark that fire all over again for you. And that is it, folks. We have answered in terms of these six projects, the age-old question, to frog or to finish. Thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me. It means so much to have you here. If you took value from today's video or enjoyed yourself at any point, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe for more content and click that bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload new content here on the channel, which is every Wednesday and every Sunday. And if you would like to help support the Wool Needles Hands channel further, you can definitely check out the Patreon Patreon. It is available for free members as well as paying patrons. All of the links are down below in the description box. Your support helps more than you know, and I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Until we meet again for Sunday's episode of the Knitting Podcast, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.